Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome science teacher. And in this video, we are going to be talking about the formation of the Earth. time ago, we're talking billions of years ago, there was no Earth. And now there is, or at least I am pretty sure that there is an Earth. When I look out my window, I see the ground. So how did we get from no Earth to an Earth? And is this a an ongoing process? Is this something that's happening in other places in the universe? Are there future planets? that right now don't exist, but will exist at some point. Where do planets come from? How do they just poof into existence? Well, that is what we are going to discuss in this video. And that is what it is your goal to understand. And also to understand some specific processes that occurred that we will talk about. So uh, let's talk first of all about where the earth form. Now, you probably would feel like it's pretty certain that it formed here, because that's where we are, is on the earth. But actually, we are not in the same place where the earth formed, because it's moving. It's moving a lot. Of course, you know that the earth is orbiting around the sun. But did you also know that the sun is orbiting around the center of the galaxy? And it's shifting positions, it's moving. And then also the galaxy itself is moving as well. So we've moved a lot. We're from, I mean, trillions of miles from where the earth originally uh, formed. Back then, once upon a time, there was a massive dust cloud and that's where you came from. That's where your skin and if you have a very handsome face with these whiskers, all of these whiskers were once uh, dust floating in a dust cloud. And under the influence of gravity, that dust cloud began to coalesce. It began to collapse and uh, fall inward on itself towards a center of gravity. Kind of like a drain, right? If I unplug a drain in a bathtub, what happens? Well, everything goes down the drain. It all comes to where the drain is. And that's kind of what gravity does. And in fact, it works the same way as a drain. If you imagine unplugging a drain, and all the stuff circles around the drain as it funnels down into it. Well, a dust cloud does the same thing. When a cloud of dust, and we call that a nebula, by the way, when a nebula begins to collapse, it doesn't just come in together in a straight line. It circles around the center and falls into the middle as though it is going down a drain. Most of the dust and gas ends up in the middle, just like most of the material that goes down the drain goes down the drain. Okay, uh, so most of the dust and gas ends up in the middle and that forms a star. But just like in your bathtub or your sink, some of the water sticks to the side of the tub and coats it. And maybe some of the, I don't know, the belly button lint or uh, whatever is left in the tub is sometimes doesn't make it around down the drain. Sometimes it sticks to the side. Well, the same thing happens when a nebula or a dust cloud is collapsing. Most of it goes into the star, but some of it ends up around the outside. But it's not just stuck at non-moving. It's orbiting. Okay. And that forms planets and that forms, uh, you know, 
moons and asteroids and comets and everything else that's in the solar system, rings around comets, all of those things are debris left over from when that cloud of dust and gas collapsed to form a star and a planetary system. So about four and a half billion years ago, 4.54 to be exact, billion years ago. And when I say to be exact, keep in mind that that's our best estimate. Okay, scientists are always learning more stuff. So it's not, it's not exactly exact. It's not precisely exact. It's as best as we can do uh, with the current knowledge that we have as science humans. Um, but, you know, maybe we'll have a different understanding down the road. But right now, we think it was about 4.5 billion years ago. This massive cloud, this nebula began to collapse and it started to circle and the debris uh, fell in and clumped down and formed a star. And then around the outside of the star, there were clumps uh, called planets. And one of those is Mercury and Venus and Earth and Mars and Jupiter and uh, Saturn and Uranus and Neptune. And Pluto is not a planet. But maybe there is another planet out there too because we recently think there might be another one, uh, though we're not sure, a ninth planet. But anyway, so let's talk about now and let's focus on the Earth. That's the formation of the solar system. And in another Master Badge, we'll go into a lot more, or another video, we'll go into a lot more detail on the formation of the solar system, specifics about the formation of the solar system. But now... I want to focus uh, directly on the formation of the Earth. When the Earth first began its existence, it started as what uh, you might uh, compare to, if you've ever watched Star Wars, that, I don't even know the name of it, that uh, lava planet, that magma planet, uh, where uh, Anakin is, has his legs chopped off. That's kind of what the Earth was like. It was a planet, it was a ball of... Uh, magma or lava. Okay. And uh, it would require many, many millions of years to cool down and form a crust. So that was about four and a half billion years ago. Uh, and then somewhere, we think, around 4.1 billion years ago uh, to 3.8 billion years ago-ish, because again, we you know, we weren't alive. These fabulous whiskers hadn't been grown yet, uh, so we were all just uh, part of that magma, really, our atoms and molecules. Uh, but somewhere around that time, there was this period known as the Great Bombardment. So in the early solar system, there was a lot more asteroids and comets and even planets, uh, protoplanets, which just means like small planet, uh, early planets, floating around, uh, orbiting the sun. The solar system was much more crowded than it is today. And all of these things were bumping into each other all the time. Because uh, they were rude. They were pushing each other around. So during that period of the Great Bombardment, there were a lot of strikes, asteroid strikes, you know, meteor hitting the Earth, and comets and so forth, slamming into the Earth, slamming into each other, slamming into the moon, and just uh, creating a mess. Uh, we can see evidence of this great bombardment on the moon because the moon is covered with uh, craters. Well, why don't we see evidence of it on the earth? Where's all the craters on the earth? Well, the earth is an active living, so-called uh, geologically speaking, living body, meaning that it is actively still, uh, it's, well, it's geologically active, it's still, there are processes like erosion and uh, weathering that are constantly erasing any asteroids that form. There's one in Arizona uh, in the United States uh, that formed about 50,000 years ago. And 
but you know that's pretty recent in geologic terms but most of the astro the the craters from asteroid and comet impacts have all been erased on the earth but because the moon is dead geologically nothing's erased there's no wind or anything there's no erosion or weathering and so those as those impacts are still there so we can see that billions of years ago 4.1 to 3.8 billion years ago we can see the evidence of that great bombardment period and incidentally the moon exists because of a strike so how did the moon form well when the earth first formed there was no moon or at least there wasn't a gigantic moon see our moon is much bigger than it should be we have this ginormous moon compared to the rest of the solar system uh, the moon is not the biggest moon in the solar system, but compared to its host planet, it is. Uh, Jupiter ha and Saturn, uh, and Uranus for that matter, have moons that are bigger than our moon. But those planets are much, 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 much bigger. And compared to the size of those planets, their moons are tiny. But compared to the size of Earth, our moon is huge mungus. Okay, how did we get such a huge mungus moon? Well, what happened is during this great bombardment, early, early in the great bombardment, uh, a planet, a protoplanet about the size of Mars came floating by and it was like, hey, Earth. And Earth was like, go away. I don't want you to crash into me. But this protoplanet didn't listen and it slammed into the Earth and created a nearly destroyed the Earth, uh, created a massive, uh, you know, field of debris and that massive field of debris coalesced around the earth and formed the moon and the earth set the earth's development way way back and uh, in a lot of ways it had to start over again in its formation so uh, after the great bombardment about 3.8 billion years ago things calmed down a little bit but the earth was still really hot Okay, it started to form a crust, and then we get this, as it cools down, we get this uh, effect where the water, which up until that point was mostly gas in the atmosphere, can begin to uh, form li into liquid. It cools down, it forms liquid, and what happens when that occurs, when you get gas water that turns into liquid, what happens? If I go outside and I look up at the liquid, or rather the gaseous water, what am I looking at? I'm looking at clouds, right? And if it turns to liquid, what am I looking at? Well, hopefully I'm not looking straight up because the water drops are gonna hit me in the eyes and burn me. Okay, water doesn't really burn. But they'll, they'll sting my eyes, uh, but uh, it, that's rain. So the earth sits in this perfect, and this is an important word. You want to remember this word is, uh, it, the earth sits in a perfect position. It's not too close to the sun to be too hot. It's not too far away to be too cold. We call that the Goldilocks zone. Okay, that's an important term, the Goldilocks zone. Any planet that sits in the Goldilocks zone of its star can have liquid water. It's far enough away that the water can be cool, but it's close enough that it's not so cold that it freezes. And that's where the earth sits. So around, uh, somewhere around, you know, uh, 4 billion-ish years ago, liquid water started to form on the earth and it started to rain. And it rained for a very long time time some scientists believe it rained maybe even for a thousand years non-stop all over the world uh, and then probably gradually stopped raining where you know some places it stopped raining and other places it kept raining and it just very slowly gradually fewer and fewer places were raining until we got into this normal weather cycle and at the end of that we had an earth covered in oceans the earth was covered in water. So we have, uh, what, have we, what do we have so far? 
gas coalesces, forms the sun, and debris left sprinkled about that forms planets. The Earth is one of those. The Earth is in the Goldilocks zone. There is a period of great bombardment because there's a lot more debris in the solar system. So all these things are smacking into each other. And uh, there's evidence of that in the craters on the moon. And the moon formed because of one of those uh, interactions. And then because we're in the Goldilocks zone, we got a period of rain that formed oceans. And the magma on the surface cooled down to form a crust. And now we have a planet earth that has continents and oceans but no life nothing alive and so around scientists believe somewhere around and they don't really know exactly precisely but somewhere between four billion years ago and two and a half billion years ago scientists believe that the first life forms very simple cells bacteria formed and began to inhabit the oceans. And from there, uh, around two and a half billion years ago, more advanced life forms began to form. And fish, well, not quite that early fish, but eventually fish. And uh, all kinds of plants and eventually everything else, including this handsome science teacher, which in my opinion is the ultimate form of evolution, although I'm being now very prideful. So, um, and that is the formation of the earth. That is how we progress from nothing to having a planet that we all live on. And in the beginning of this video, I asked, is this an ongoing process? Okay. And both in terms of our earth and other planets. And the answer is yes. Our earth is still evolving. It's still changing. And uh, there are ongoing developments. Evolution, according to scientists, is still occurring. And uh, there are, you know, geologically, the continents are moving and things are shifting and changing all the time. Okay, so our Earth is still developing and changing. And other planets out there, I mean, this is a massive universe. It's unimaginable how big this universe is. Other planets are forming all of the time and are in all sorts of stages of development. Right now, as we sit here and you watch this video, there are planets out there that are going through a great bombardment or massive rainstorm or, uh, you know, that just have oceans or whatever. All of these places, stages of development in this massive, endless universe are all ongoing out there somewhere right now. And there are dust clouds, nebula, that haven't formed yet, that haven't collapsed, uh, that will eventually collapse and form planets. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. These rambling science videos where I go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that I teach, which you can sign up for if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes, all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, uh, a science teacher with, well, three, three degrees, but two of them are in science. So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your, uh, your science student. So sign up. Subscribe to the channel and I release lots of videos also in addition to these ones lots of little uh, Short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics Those ones you don't get to see my handsome face But they're still good videos and they're much more targeted and those ones are scripted So you don't have to hear me like you are right now going blah 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 the end uh, Subscribe. Thank you. Goodbye